Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope, and today we're going to be giving you a how to play on Vast the Mysterious Manor, and this video will specifically tie to the spider, mm -hmm. which uh, branches off into various asymmetric properties that deal with the other larger asymmetric nature of the game, but... but don't worry about it. Don't worry about it's it. It's gonna be fine. This video will follow a uh, how to play format um, that will be linked in the description of the video. So mm -hmm. if you're looking for something specific, we'll do our very best to kind of tie things to certain timestamps. Mm -hmm. uh, the format that we're gonna be following, we're going to talk about uh, the general overview of the spider character, the win and lose conditions. We're going to talk about the setup, uh, going through the components that you should have in front of you. Then we're gonna walk you through the different boards, uh, the specific turn structure that each one of the vast player boards have. After that, we'll go back through those turn structures and dive into key terminology, uh, specific abilities based on the type of spider character you're playing, uh, and try to make that as clear and concise as possible. After that, we're going to touch back in on uh, main board encounters mm -hmm. and overall strategy, dealing with other players on the board and a little bit of the information you might need to know if you're playing this character for the first time. Yeah. Uh, whatever the case, this will be uh, quite the video. This character is one of the more complicated and one of the more fun characters in kind of the vast experience. So we might as well dive in. Jan, could yeah. you tell me a little bit about the spider? What's going on? So you have awoken from beneath this mansion, mm -hmm. and since you have awoken, you have a lust for blood. You must collect enough blood to generate the enough terror. Jan, this video is taking a turn. <laughs> enough terror to escape through the front door of the mansion. Okay? So the way that you'll do that is by gaining exactly 12 terror, which you're going to mark on a dial. Mm -hmm. However, you'll lose if a pesky annoying yellow knight paladin takes out five of your precious babies yeah so your job is to move around the board uh infecting it with webs and eggs and scaring people and gathering blood to gain terror which we'll dive into uh, a little bit later in this video mm -hmm. and then escape out of that front door all the while you're being hunted. Oh yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and go through the components that we should have in front. The easiest way for us to do this is I'm going to reference this setup card and you're going to point out the different components as I go through them. Yeah. So to set up, we should have collected the three different spider form boards and set them in front of us. We must start as the giant spider. We then should have the giant spider uh, set here in the center of the tile on the pit token which will always be the starting location whenever the giant spider exists in the game state. You want to shuffle your 12 power cards into a deck, and then you want to draw three of them. After that, you're going to collect 15 blood tokens and 10 web tokens. Now, an important note with the blood and the web tokens, we are incorporating the expansion pack into this video. Mm -hmm. So, if you're playing a game without the expansion, you just have the core box, your web tokens are going to be cardboard as well, instead of the miniatures that we have here. Uh, after that, you're going to find your terror dial and go ahead and set it to zero terror. Next, you're going to collect the giant spider, the sorcerer, the five spiderlings, and the three egg figures. Place the giant spider in the center of the pit on the map, the other ones near or on their boards, mm -hmm. and we're ready to dive in. <laughs> Some important traits mm -hmm. that deal with the spider specifically, uh, since these are things that'll modify the general rules video that we've already done. First off, the spider is agile. You always hit on attacks and cannot be forced to attack. So if someone's pushing their way into your room, or you get pushed into someone's room, or you move into a room, or you move into a room, you do not have to engage with an attack not action. At all. Crawly, your giant spider can cross one wall per turn and your spiderlings can cross any number of walls. <laughs> it's important. It's a movement pattern that is not standard for the rest of the players of the game. Mm -hmm. Shapeshifter, when a spiderling is hit, return it to the box. When the sorcerer or giant spider is hit, return a spiderling to the box, remove your figure, place a spiderling on a tile adjacent to your old figure, then place each remaining one on a tile adjacent to the previous spiderling placed. So, if this board was built out more than it is, mm -hmm. basically what that's saying is that your big spider and your sorcerer transform into spiderlings whenever they're dealt a damage. Yeah. And then finally, tiny. Your spiderlings and eggs do not force attacks. 
So it's important if someone is moving in or they're crossing paths with someone, they do not force an encounter in their zone. Mm -hmm. So those are the general kind of overview traits of the spider. Let's start talking about the turn structure. Yeah. And we're going to start with the giant spider specifically, since that is how you will be beginning the game. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and break down what we're following. So the very first thing that you're going to do, no matter what, is choose a form. However, keep in mind that at the beginning of the game, you must be the giant spider. Mm -hmm. So after you choose your form, you're going to, if you can, gain terror. You'll gain terror in one of two ways, and we'll go into specifically how you can do this later in the video, but you'll either be able to feed or you'll be able to scare. So feeding is going to depend on your resource, which is blood, and the latter, scare, is going to depend on webs that you have on the board. Again, we'll go through it soon. After you decide to gain your terror, or if you couldn't, you don't, um, you'll get to move and cast spells. So this is where you're going to be able to traverse the board and play the cards in your hand. So once you have placed all the cards and you've done everything you can, then you'll discard any remaining cards that might be there still, and you're gonna draw up back up to your spirit. Mm. We'll get to that very soon, but essentially spirit is your hand limit to a certain point. Okay, so that's the general flow of the spider board. And all the other characters have modifiers to the specifics, but mm -hmm. they all follow this same choose form, gain terror, move and cast spells, and then finally discard and resolve things. One, two, three, four. So let's now go through the giant spider specifically, talk about how each one of these in-depth actions work, and talk about how it might be different from another character. Yep. And we'll dive into each character one at a time. So if you're looking for a specific thing on the spiderlings, or on the uh, sorcerer, I will have a little timestamp letting you know when we flip that board over. Yep. So onto the giant spider. How do you choose form? So choosing a form is as simple as putting whatever you have face up on your board face down and then flipping face up whatever other board you have. Don't flip that the whole way over. I told them I put a timestamp in. Get back to the giant spider. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But essentially that's what you're gonna do. Yeah. And the reason why they recommend that you do that is so that you don't confuse all that information because if you have everything face up, mm -hmm. you're gonna have a bad time, trust me. Now, so. an important thing with choosing form, mm -hmm. there's a sequence for how that happens. When the giant spider is on the board and you choose another form, you'll remove this figure and then you'll add figures based on what you've chosen. The sorcerer will just go in and replace the giant spider. Yep. The giant spider will just go in and replace the sorcerer. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward. If you go from the sorcerer or the giant spider over to the spiderlings, they all pile in to the same zone, depending on how many you have left. Let's say you've taken a wound of damage, so we have four remaining on the board because these are also kind of your life points. Uh, with those here on the board, they then can spread out and scatter across any of the lit or dark tiles on the map. Mm -hmm. When you are ready to transform back from Spiderlings into one of the other two single figure forms, you're going to choose one of the locations where your Spiderlings exist, remove that Spiderling, add your main figure, either one of these, and then remove all of the other Spiderlings from the board. So they can be utilized to get you around the board, mm -hmm. escape, get you to a specific location. They're sort of a scatter mechanic. Yeah. But make sure that you always spawn them at the same zone when you transfer, and then you always remove all of your spiderlings whenever you spawn in a main figure. Yeah, and we'll repeat this in each one of the timestamps just in case. Just briefly. Yeah. We'll touch on it briefly. Um, so after you finally choose chosen your form, gaining terror. Mm -hmm. So this spider works very differently to what you may be accustomed to with the dragon in Crystal Caverns. So the spider is going to essentially gain resources throughout the game, and you're going to do that by generating blood. So you're going to generate blood in three ways. You're either going to A, hurt a character in order to get blood from them. I know, it's, it's amazing, right? B, you're going to either generate blood from your eggs, that you're going to be laying across the map and you have to protect them, trust me. Mm -hmm. Or C, you get you draw and reveal a blood tile. Let's dive into those different ways that blood is gained throughout the actions. The first is gonna be the card here. Um, Fangs will deal a wound to a character on your tile or adjacent to you mm -hmm. and will generate you blood based on those actions. Now, to be clear, Wounds affect different characters in different ways. Yeah. You have the skeletons which crumble, you have the paladin which uh, uh -huh. doesn't take damage but doesn't crumble or fall apart. But don't worry about it. 
but don't worry about you it. Don't gotta, you don't gotta focus on that. Yeah, just know that you can generate blood from any of the Delicious characters blood. across the board. The second way to gain blood is going to be by revealing map tiles mm -hmm. and exploring. So your specific map tile that's important to you will be that blood tile here. When you reveal it, you will spawn a blood. You will also gain a blood just for the act of revealing it. Yep. If there is already a map tile with a blood token on it that was revealed by a different character or you on a different turn, you're able to move onto that tile and pick up that blood. Yep. Okay. And the last way to uh, gain or spawn blood, I believe is tied to the sorcerer. Yeah, isn't it, it is. Yep. So we'll dive into that mechanic when we flip over the sorcerer mm -hmm. board. Just know that the giant spider is going to be best at drawing blood and laying eggs. Mm -hmm. The sorcerer is going to be best at protecting those eggs and uh, kind of building this network of, of webs and blood across the board. And the little spiders are going to be best at scattering, evading capture, and populating the board with obstacles. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of how the, the structure goes. So let's keep moving past the blood, talk a little bit about the feed action, and then let's move on down to the scare action. Yeah, so whenever you accumulate three blood or whenever you have enough resources, you're only gonna be able to activate any of these actions once. Mm. So you might have nine blood, that does not mean you get to do it multiple times. So whenever you have three blood, you're gonna be able to discard those three to gain one terror. Anytime you take terror, you're going to rotate your dial. And whenever you rotate your dial, you're going to see that you're going to reveal different items and different stats for your character, but we'll get to the stats soon enough. We'll dive into the dial in, in just a bit. Just know that that's the mechanic that's tied to this. And the main reason why, you'll, why you're doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the next thing is going to be scaring. scaring. Mm -hmm. So scaring is going to uh, involve laying webs everywhere. The more webs you have, the closer you'll be to scaring the, the, well, the visitors of the mansion. Exactly, you're gonna need six webs and a power card in order to generate another terror. Now an important note about webs, you can have a maximum of three on each location. Mm -hmm. They are removed when characters cross them, but they also halt movement on any characters that stumble into them. So while you want webs to not only terrorize the, the mansion, you also want to place them in areas where the paladin might have a hard time getting to you. Yep. So that is the uh, gain terror, yep. uh, the feed and the scare conditions. Let's move down to move and cast spells. How does that work with the giant spider specifically? So similar to what the paladin would do on his phase where he's placing his cubes and he's doing different things, this is going to be the main meat of the spider. Uh, so essentially you're going to be able to do two things and depending on the character that you have, you're going to be able to do it in different times. The giant spider is going to be able to do both of them interchangeably. So the first thing is that you're going to be able to move up to three spaces. And after that, you're going to be able to cast spell cards or power cards from your hand. Okay, so whenever you're moving, you're going to be able to cross at least one wall during that movement. And because your spider uh, has a particular ability, you're going to be able to move, activate a power card, move again, and maybe do something else. Other roles don't get that ability. Yeah, so okay. the spider can take actions in mm -hmm. any order. They don't yep. have to complete their movement before they, they use a power card. Yeah. Uh, now the power cards you're gonna have available to you uh, are each going to be treated slightly differently with mm -hmm. each one of these creatures, and they're gonna do different specific things. Let's walk through the basic actions for each one of these power cards, and then talk about how they're going to uh, influence or work with a giant spider specifically. Yeah. Perfect, so we have three types of power cards, okay? And that's going to be repeated across that 12, 12 card deck. You're gonna have eyes, you're gonna have webs, and you're gonna have fangs. Mm -hmm. Eyes are going to let you reveal tiles. Pretty straightforward. Webs are going to let you place a web down. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward. And finally, fangs are going to let you draw blood. Pretty straightforward. Now, specifically with the giant spider, uh, all of these cards could be treated as fangs. Yes. Which is why it's why we said that the spider is best at attacking kind of a, mm -hmm. a, a opposing player. Mm -hmm. Because all of these could be fang cards if we wanted them to be. Along with that, these actions are going to be done twice in an adjacent zone. So if I was playing an eyes card or a webs card, I could then resolve that two times in an adjacent zone. The spider 
could see both of those. Yep. The same rules apply when you flip a tile. You always have to make sure your entrances are connected and you resolve whatever that tile location has. For instance, here, we would place a poltergeist. Here, we would place a blood token and we would gain a blood token and we would populate the edge of each one of those rooms, uh, each one of the empty doorway tiles mm -hmm. with a unrevealed tile zone. Yep. Okay. So now here's when things get interesting for the spider. Okay. Each of those power cards can also double as spells, depending on how you're laying them down. So, an example. The giant spider can lay eggs. So whenever you have two power cards that you wish to use to lay an egg, you'll discard those, and you'll place an egg on, your, uh, on a tile that you're on or on an adjacent tile, right? However, any time that you place a second egg on the same turn, you would just have to discard a single power card, okay? So that's one of the spells. The third spell is legs. So if at any time you need to hustle a little bit more as a giant spider, which I might happen, need to hustle. right? You can go ahead and spend one power card per hustle to move through the board. Now, how much movement does that get you whenever you spend Only it? one. So per if I wanted card. to move three spaces, three cards. I would have to discard three cards. But hey, you're the spider, you're going to get stronger. That might mean that you have more cards available to you by the end of the game. Yeah, your deck will grow as you're kind of playing the game. Mm -hmm. Are those all the spells you're able to do with the giant spider? Yeah, and, and to be clear, the ability of activating a particular power card two times is also a spell. Okay. It's just kind of like wired in into how you play with the giant spider. It's it's a uh, kind of constant spell that mm -hmm. exists or yep. a modifier. Now, you mentioned spawning eggs. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about what the eggs are on the board and what they result in. So essentially the eggs are going to serve a particular purpose. If you're able to take care of those eggs, they're going to generate some beautiful terror for you, the spider player. So you wanna make sure that they're safe that they're somewhere on the board where not everybody can reach them, and that they have enough blood so that they can survive. So surrounding them with webs would mm -hmm. halt players' movement. They'd have to deal with the webs first. And then blood. Blood is the defensive stat when it comes to those eggs? Yeah, so actually, so any time that you have eggs on the board and you place them either on spaces that already have blood, or maybe you're placing blood around those eggs in that tile, for every blood token you have, they're actually gonna become stronger. How would you go about placing blood on an egg? Is it any blood you have in your reserves currently? No, not really. So remember when we talked about the sorcerer? Yeah. So that's something that she is gonna be able to do later on once you change into that form because she essentially takes care of those okay. eggs. So the sorcerer is gonna be the one that is kind of bringing them to harvest mm -hmm. in, in a sense. Awesome. Are there any more modifiers on the giant spider that we need to be aware of? No, we have already talked about her specific ability about being having a giant mouth, mm -hmm. that she can turn any power card into a fangs card. Mm -hmm. Super important. And we've talked about all three major spells. So let's go ahead and demonstrate how choosing your form would go. Oh, let's yeah. say I want to switch from the giant spider over to the spellcaster. So at the start of the turn, mm -hmm. you'd flip that board over. I would remove my giant spider figure and I'd bring the spellcaster over. Simple as that, and that starts the top of the round for the Sorcerer. Let's talk about the specific actions the Sorcerer has. Yeah, so to be clear, all actions from point from the first to the third are essentially going to be the same, the third being the only one that has particulars. So card specifics and spell modifiers are where the, the core kind of asymmetric powers come into play. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and move quickly through. Uh, choose form was at yep. the beginning. Uh, we will demonstrate how you do that with the spiderlings when we switch to that board. We also went more in depth on the giant spider if you skip to this point in the video. Uh, feed and scare are going Same to thing. generate you terror mm -hmm. through blood and through cards. Yep. Uh, lastly, or through webs and cards. Mm -hmm. Lastly, move and cast spells. So this, this is where is... the crux comes uh -huh. in. Talk about the things that are different. So first off, the sorcerer can only move up to two spaces, mm. okay? And they cannot cross walls. They're powerful, but they're not that powerful. They're more of a human figure. Yeah. You know, she exists in the game state where the spider can kind of scurry up and mm -hmm. get into the rafters. Exactly. So here, it will work very similarly. Remember the spider, the giant spider has a very particular ability that they can cast spells at any time and at any point in their movement. Mm. The sorcerer 
also has that ability. So at any point throughout its two movement phase or more if you discard cards, it could cast spells. Yeah. Okay, yes, what I do can. those spells do? So first off, the sorcerer has the ability called All Seeing. So that means that she treats all of her power cards as eyes cards. I also have that ability when I play games. I know, I know. I, I, I know, Jesse, I've, 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 I can tell. All right, let's it's, it's affected me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, remember that the cool thing about eyes is that you're gonna be able to reveal tiles, and when you do so, if it's a blood tile, you're immediately gonna gain blood. Mm -hmm. So the sorcerer is really good at trying to find those tiles as quickly as possible. Yep. However, one of the best things about her is that she can actually target any visible tile. Oh, okay. Okay, mm -hmm. nice. So she's able to populate the board a little bit differently than the giant spider. So remember, the giant spider can only target with her power cards and her spells the tile she's on or adjacent tiles. And she's going to be able to do that two times. That's great. However, the sorcerer, if you're able to get a straight line of rooms, you might be able to activate and reveal tiles that are way ahead. Like casting a spell kind of by mm -hmm. line of sight alone. Yep. What other differences are, are on her board? Yeah, so that would be the first type of spell that she has, which is cast a power card and even one visible tile. The next is going to actually be divided into two parts. First, okay. we have Tend. So Tend is going to essentially be, you're gonna place one blood token on every single egg you might have on the board. So in a situation like this, would I play two, two blood tokens? Yes, there? on the same tile. So you're like pulling blood up from the rafters. Yeah. They're a little bit more vulnerable because they're here together, but you could buff them in a more aggressive way. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then finally, you're going to have Veil. Veil is very important because it's going to let you take already revealed tiles and place them face down once more. Oh, interesting. So you can close off the mansion a little bit. Mm -hmm. okay. And you'll do that by spending one of your precious power cards. Mm. Okay. And then the last thing you can do is going to be the same. It's going to be the legs movement where you're mm -hmm. able to move one space. Yep. Uh, is that the main differences or well, is there something else that stands out with... Not uh, necessarily stands out, but something important to note is that in order to tend, you must have at least one blood to do so. Oh, okay. So you have to have blood on your board and able to... in, in order. Essentially, to you're feeding across the map. Yep. That makes sense. And then the last thing is, did you mention that all cards in your hand can be eyes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You so did you, did all, you mention that or not? You mentioned it. I didn't mention it earlier. I did. I did. I said all seeing, all, all okay. cars are eyes. Okay. Yeah. We did talk about so it. So that's going to be the main part of the sorcerer's uh, kind of mechanic. Mm -hmm, Once mm -hmm. again, to remind you, the spider is good at attacking. Sorcerer is good at gaining and populating eggs with blood. And so attacking from afar too. Generating terror. Mm -hmm. The spiderlings. Let's go ahead and demonstrate Oof. how we would select the spiderlings. I, at the start of my turn, no longer want to be the sorcerer. I'm going to Why remove you? her from the board and we're going to bring over all of these spiderlings. They'll populate the one tile that she was on. This board will be flipped and then we start our turn talk a little bit about the sequence of events. Of course, so as we just saw, first thing you'll do, like every other form, you're gonna choose a form. Mm -hmm. Second thing you're gonna do, you're also going to be able to gain terror once, feed, and once scare. Same mechanic, mm -hmm. spending three blood, having six webs, and playing down a power card. Yep. Move is a little bit different with the spider webs. Yeah, so as you can imagine, you're very tiny and you scurry about everywhere. So you're gonna have a lot before. Yeah, this this guy, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> so you're gonna be able to move every single spider you have on the board up to four times or four movement, and they will be able to cross every single wall they come across. Mm. Okay, so that is a lot of movement very quickly in a lot of places on the board. And remember, they do not create encounters. Mm -hmm. So I can move into that poltergeist zone without a concern in the world. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And you'll also actually be able to move across the paladin without initiating an attack too. Yeah. So there's a lot of possibilities for you to scurry and disappear and maybe go two to three walls beyond where the paladin might have been able to reach you. So there's a lot of things to do there. And the spiderling form is going to be the revert form for every one of your main characters. We touched on this, but it's important to bring it back up. Mm -hmm. So if one of your main figures got attacked, they would transform into and populate the board as spiderling. So this yep. is the kind of escape plan, uh, kind of dust in the wind type of uh, character that you'll be playing. At the start of your turn, you could use the same transform mechanic to turn back into mm -hmm. either one of the other two big guys. Yep. 
Okay. Or you can stay as the spiders and run amok. Or you can stay as the spiders and get the heck out of Dodge. Oh yeah. So, an important note with the spider movement. Yeah, so remember that we've mentioned plenty of times that the giant spider and sorcerer can activate spells and power cards at any time? Your spiderlings, they can't do that. Mm -hmm. They're only going to be able to activate their spells or their power cards at the beginning of a movement or at the end of a movement, never in between. And uh, kind of makes sense. They'd be very powerful if they could exist everywhere and play cards at any point. However, mm -hmm. this is where the spiderlings get really interesting. Mm -hmm. Any card that you play, you'll be able to activate on every single space where your spiderling might be on. Yeah. So that means if you play a web card, if you have five spiderlings on the board, that's five webs already, you'll only need one more in order to gain that beautiful, beautiful terror. And so you're right next to being able to kind of populate the entire mansion with webs. Mm -hmm. Now, an important thing to remember, all tokens are limited. So if you're playing with the cardboard or the miniature-based webs, those do not combine. So you're gonna be able to have a maximum of 10 potential webs on the board. So if you're populating five at a time, you're gonna have about two turns worth of that. But it's so worth it. It's probably still worth yeah. it. Now, the important mechanic with the spiderlings, the giant spider could see everything in your hand as fangs. The sorcerer could see everything in your hand as eyes. The spiderlings can see everything in your hand as webs. And so they're really good at covering this mansion with webs. Talk about the spells. Let's dive into what is different when it comes to the spiderlings play. Yeah, so we already talked about one of them, that they're gonna be able to activate any power card or spell on every single tile they're on. Yep. It's super important. The next is actually really interesting. You're going to be able to loot treasure. So these little spiders, they love gold and they love shiny stuff. If they ever come across a treasure token, they're gonna to be able to take it for themselves. So one of the trick, whenever you're doing a loot treasure spell, is that you, you're you gonna have to try and maximize how many tokens you can gain at the mm. same time. Yep. Because for every single spider that you have on the board that can collect a token, you're gonna be able to gain more terror that way. So for example, if you get two treasure with those two spiders, so for example, if this was like so, you'd be able to gain one terror. Mm. However, if you have three to four spiders with a treasure token on their tile, you're gonna be able to gain Two terror. Mm -hmm. And if you have the almost impossible, inconceivable amount of five treasure tokens for every spider ling that you have, that's gonna be three terror. Yeah, someone would have to be playing the game pretty poorly for that to be the case. And just a reminder, this is an asymmetric game, so like there's other people that want to deal with the treasure, like the paladin wants to find it and get it, the mansion wants to hand out cards, there's poltergeists that want to resolve things. Yeah, 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 yeah. but, 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 but. Don't worry about it? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, yeah, just, just focus on the spider. Finally, like every other role that we've had with the spider, you're also gonna have legs to move with. So for every power card that you spend, you're gonna be able to move each spiderling across the board. And that's important to remember. It does, it gives one movement to every single spiderling. Mm -hmm. And they can go across walls, they can go into unrevealed tiles. There's a whole lot of movement opportunities with them. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So we've been through each player board. Mm -hmm. We've been through the sequence of events. We've talked a little bit in depth on each one of the little specific mechanics since each one's a little bit asymmetric. What we haven't been able to touch on yet is that fancy little dial sitting next Ooh, to you. Ooh, you mean my favorite dial? Your favorite dial. Oh, Let's go ahead and dial. dive into that. Explain what's going on here and what people will see when they play the game. So this is, in theory, your accumulative power in this game. So any time that you gain terror, remember terror, you're going to gain it by feeding, by scaring, by collecting treasure, so many ways. And that's the win condition of the game. Mm -hmm. That's your objective. To get to 12 terror. Mm -hmm. So as you collect that, that terror, you're going to be rotating this dial little by little, and you'll notice that the numbers, they're constantly changing. Those numbers are really good for you. Why? Mm -hmm. Because every time that that terror goes up, your defense is gonna go up. Defense is the attack encounter. So if the paladin is moving into your zone, your defense is what type of strength he's gonna have to have to overcome and create a wound on you. Mm -hmm. 
and then your spirit is gonna go up as well. Mm. So that means that you're gonna have more things that you're gonna be able to do on your turn. For every spirit that you have is an additional card that you get to have in your hand. However, something very interesting, you'll notice here that there is a table. This table gives you a preview of what's coming down and that's important because as you start progressing, you start becoming stronger, your spider is going to gain more and more spirit. However, after the 10th mark, your spider's spirit drops again. Mm -hmm. She's overextended herself. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have to be very careful to try and get to that exit because you're yeah. gonna be very limited by that point. Cross that line, like get to right to that point, and then it's gonna come down to really timing. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to play the right cards, gain just the right amount of terror, and like you said, you've gotta make it to the exit or you don't win the game. So. Yeah. That's the uh, that's the main core mechanic. Is there any mechanics when it comes to these player boards that we haven't been able to touch on yet? No, I don't believe. I don't believe so. If not, let's go ahead and pull it over here onto the game board itself. Mm -hmm. We've went over kind of populating blood and different tiles and icons. Let's talk a little bit about the gameplay. Who do you need to be worried about? And what are some of the strategies in terms of how you manipulate this board? Well, naturally, and anybody that's played original of Ass will know this, yellow is your dire enemy. You don't want yellow anywhere near you or anywhere near your things. They suck. Hey, sir, this is Quackalope. Let's forego If you you're know, a paladin, if you're a paladin, yellow. you suck anyways. Just stating the color yellow is important to our channel. Could we refrain just a little bit? If we're talking bass, buddy, I'm not refraining. <laughs> not at all. Not Never right. refraining. So the paladin is what you want to be concerned about. Yeah. His strategy throughout the game is going to be hunting you down and pestering you. Yeah. Don't underestimate how valuable your hit points are. These spiderlings, uh, sure, you have five of them. But if you get early on in the game hit once or twice, you're severely limited in movement that you can do, webs that you can spread, actions you can take. Um, so that's something to pay kind of close attention to. Yeah. Along with that, because this is an asymmetric game, there may be a little bit more negotiation at the table than you might initially expect. For instance, the mansion doesn't necessarily have to be an enemy. Not at all. Why give the paladin the treasure on the tile that you're about to reveal? Why not place it next to one of my spiderlings? Because I'm You've still- You've gotta help me out, man. I'm still down at three terror. Please. I mean, the paladin doesn't mean Are we gonna end the buff. game so early? You don't Look, he's so close. Early. I think the spider lends itself to conversations around the board, maybe a little bit better than some of the other characters, specifically because it only really has one natural enemy. And, if you're paying attention to who the paladin's enemies are, helping the skeletons get to the paladin can be a really good way to keep the paladin from getting to you. And one of the things I love about Vass is that it's a gigantic balancing act amongst so many simultaneous jugglers. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the best things about it. So I think that's the how to play on the spider specifically. We're doing in-depth videos on all seven different, all seven? different characters in all seven different characters in vast the mysterious manner and so if you are interested in or playing any of the other characters please swing over and and give those other videos a look this is a new format we're experimenting with mm -hmm. um trying to figure out how to teach games in a way that we would receive well because mm -hmm. um, it can be hard to get into and learn a game like this we hope you've enjoyed it we hope it's been informative uh, feel free to leave comments in the comment section down below letting us know about this specific structure, a more conversational tone, and what ways or things that we could do to help you learn games uh, for your specific gaming group. Whatever the case, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Having more people in this community really does help us do more videos like this. And we like doing videos like this. No, not... No, no I, so love, I love I okay. love doing videos yeah, like this. He loves I, it. I genuinely I do this because I, I I thoroughly enjoy it and I thoroughly enjoy the community and the conversations that we're able to have. Um, and I want to be able to do this for as long as possible and do as many videos as I possibly can. Um, so your support, you subscribing, you sharing these videos, uh, really does uh, an immense amount to let publishers know that you care about our content, you appreciate mm -hmm. the content we're making, and you like them to help us do more of it. Whatever you do, though whether you like, comment, subscribe, whether you get this game specifically to the table, 
remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.